Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. I have now had one week with my Sprint Palm Pre. Um, after waiting in line at uh, for about three and a half hours in Hawaii when I was out there last week for work, and I haven't really done any kind of review or anything. Um, so instead of just a review, since I know there's a lot of great ones out there from Engadget and um, Pre Central and a bunch of other guys, uh, PC Meg, those kind of guys excellent reviews to check out. I wanted to kind of give a one week experience with my Palm Pre. <clears throat> so as you've probably seen before, this is of course the Pre. Slide up keyboard there, and the display, mirror in the back, and uh, we'll walk through the device here in just a second. Um, one thing that, uh, let's start with the device. So this is the Pre. I'll go ahead and turn the screen off. And this is the back that comes with the uh, touchstone. It's actually a soft touch back, very nice, con very well constructed with palm embedded in it. it has a nice feel to it. This is the uh, the default back that you do get when you buy the pre. It's a highly glossy, really thin plastic uh, back, as you can see here. Nothing much on it. Very thin plastic. This one. Let's see if I can take this off because it's not that easy. You have to put your finger in the hole and then kind of pry it with. This was shown to me by the palm guy. Put your finger in the button, kind of loosen it up a little bit, then you have to start to pry the back off, and it's not very easy. That's actually the back of the Pre there, um, quite a large battery. Um, it's like it's 13, what is it, 13? Oh, 1150, so it could be, could be better, as we'll see in some of the battery life. And then, as you can see on the back here, these two connectors right there, make contact with the back of the pre to charge via the touchstone whereas the default one has nothing in it at all so that's the new back you get um, and let me go ahead and start it up while I walk around the rest of the device because it takes quite a while to start up actually so on the back you'll see there's a uh, there's a three megapixel camera and a flash as well on the top we do have the uh, three and a half millimeter headset jack which is great the now fairly traditional uh, slider for ringer switch on and off. There's a power button on the corner there. And then over here is our micro USB. One thing about the micro USB uh, it's, is you have to make sure to get the plug all the way in there. The easiest method I found is to actually open it and then you swivel it around to give you full access. If it just kind of rests like off to the side, it's hard to get access with your... Uh, with your cable. And I'm still not quite sold on the door as you can see. Okay. And then the bottom there's the little button for releasing the back and on the left side we've got uh, volume rockers right there. And that's about it. Then on the front we've got, uh, as you can see, it's a glossy finish with lots of fingerprints on it. But it is, uh, I'll just shine it up here. It is very, f it's a flush screen. Fits right into the slab. On the bottom here is the little track, well, it's like a pearl, as you can see, as I move my finger across it, it lights up, and, the butt, and next to it, the gesture area here will light up as well, um, on that side as well. There's a little microphone opening right there, and the headset speaker. Um, this does not actually roll or do anything, it's just mainly to get back to the, the home screen on the device. And then, of course, we slide up, and there's our keyboard. Um, kind of a tight keyboard, mainly used for text entry and speed dialing, but there's no uh, no other real functionality with it as far as assigning shortcuts and that kind of thing. And just for comparison, show you side by side, or I guess top and bottom. This is the Trio Pro keyboard, which um, very similar in width. The Trio Pro is actually uh, in height is a little bit tighter, and the keys are not angled or anything. Um, looking more closely at it, they actually the uh, the pre keyboard is a little better is even better than the pre than the Trio Pro because the keys are more spaced between each other. It's tighter on the Trio Pro, and I thought that was going to be worse. Here is the uh, Palm Centro keyboard. As you can see, the Palm Centro is quite small. I can add some pictures that you can see it. It's quite small compared to the pre. And actually, before I got the pre, I was thinking that uh, it was the worst of the three. I actually think it's now the best of the three keyboards. So. So that's the keyboard just now started up. We'll get into uh, into the device a little bit. 
and I'll talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons after my one week of using it. Let me just uh, flip off the switch there so we can get a little closer to the screen. So there we have uh, just the background and kind of the home screen. As you put your finger up here, you can make those um, bottom icons kind of highlight and jump to them and then lower them back down. This is useful um, when you're in other applications to pull that up. Otherwise, it just uh, you might as well use the static ones on the main screen. You can assign uh, these four on the left side. There's five total. This one here is for the launcher, and I don't think you can reassign that. If I wanted to throw Pandora down here, I did just tap on it. It would highlight, and then I just drag it right down here. Actually, I can't put it there because there's no room, so let's take the calendar, throw the calendar up, and off right there grab Pandora tap and hold bring it in there and there we see okay so you can have up to four applications and yeah like I thought you can't take the uh, the launcher off there so speaking of the launcher I push the button the first screen uh, has a couple of default apps that they put on there and then a bunch of the other apps that I've downloaded from the app catalog There's actually three of these similar to the G1 which also has three I flip it over, I see some more applications that are loaded on the device, and these first two screens you can move things around. The last one is your preferences, uh, settings, all of that kind of good stuff, all right? So there's only three, and it's uh, side to side three times, and then up and down. Um, let's see here. You can just see some of my favorite applications, Evernote, which I'm going to show in a bit here in more detail on another review. Uh, Sprint Navigation, which is the excellent Telenav client. Um, this one thing that is attractive about this is that is included with the data plan, which is normally a ten dollar, um, ten dollar a month fee to run this software, and it works absolutely wonderfully. I really like uh, the Telenav software. Um, you can actually have destinations set up online beforehand so you would just go to uh, share and more and you could uh, see your favorites and see your addresses that you want to use and that kind of thing. One thing that you'll see me doing is I, I swipe across the bottom of the gesture area to go back. That's the functionality and then if I push that again go in start up another application. Another thing that's very attractive to me is the fact that I can have all my inboxes appear in one central place and uh, similar to the iPhone, say I want to delete something, I just grab it, drag it over, and delete it. Um, email looks wonderful. Let's just open up this one from Orbitz. And just so you can see up in the signal there, I do have kind of a weak signal. It shows that I'm roaming. I've got Wi-Fi on to try to get some speed. Um, that's one of my issues is with the Sprint network and my house and area. So as you can see, email really looks great. And the pinch and zoom similar to the iPhone works as well. Double tap to go back. Um, I really am uh, very pleased with uh, the attractiveness and the UI of the email on the, on the device. So if I press that again, go back. Uh, we've got NASCAR. I'm not necessarily a huge NASCAR fan, but Casey Kane uh, grew up in the area where I did in Enumclaw, Washington, so he's kind of, uh, I've got him as my, where's that, my favorite driver there kind of follow some of his stats is pretty cool. And Sprint TV with some of the services are included and there's just a whole lot more. Um, apps are still pretty limited in the app catalog. I believe there's now we're up to 30 after a week <clears throat> and some good ones. You know Pandora of course, uh, Evernote, Splash ID, SE is on there, Fandango. Uh, there are some good applications which is nice. And as you can see down here I've been kind of sliding right and left to go through the different applications and you can actually set that up so that the gesture will switch between apps like when they're open and if I switch that it would switch to the app but I prefer to have it uh, go back because otherwise I can't find a way to go back on the device without any navigation buttons and then you actually have to go up here to the screen uh, to go right and left through your different cards uh, there is no universal um, rotation it is in some applications particularly the web browser Sometimes you do have to tap in the top corner in an application to access menus. There's a little bit of jumping around, kind of like what the G1 does. You know, you're on your keyboard sometimes, sometimes you're on the screen, and sometimes you're in the gesture area. And it just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not all super intuitive. There's kind of the backlighting of the keyboard, as you can see. 
and there are some keyboard tips and tricks with the shift button and the orange button uh, that are in the user guide that you should probably uh, try to check out. So um, I'll give you the cons first for me personally. Uh, the sprint signal has been an issue for me where I live and work and that's something that concerns me. Uh, my display is actually, I, I think I have a defective unit. If I do decide to keep it, I am going to try to return it. Um, as we can see here, if you can hear that, my display actually wobbles quite a bit side to side. Um, you know, I understand that uh, you go up and down with it, but as you can see, I mean, if you look at, I don't know if you can really see that, but my display really is off kilter and, and slides around. I mean, James and those guys said theirs was difficult. Mine actually is kind of easy to slide up. It, it really slides uh, side to side quite a bit, so I think I have, actually have a defective unit. I'm trying not to judge my whole experience on just that unit, so uh, if I make a commitment, I'll, I'll definitely get another one. Uh, the calendar is a bit weak, and I wrote about this in a little bit more detail. Um, you know, there's no agenda view, all right? So you have to create these uh, these fake appointments to try to get the accordion uh, view kind of going on. And then when you go to week, uh, week is kind of weak. I mean, it'll show you the bars, and that does tell me that there's bars there. But if I tap on it, it goes through that day. And then if you go to month, it really tells you uh, nothing except for what the days of the month are and what day we're on right now. It's not very helpful at all. And, and Palm has been strong on the calendar. I expected something better than that. There is no video um, video support. There are limited apps, but I'm not going to count those out right now because I know that they are coming and they'll be coming quickly. Uh, and the battery life hasn't been uh, that great. Um, you've had to have had to do some tricks to manage the battery life. Uh, thankfully, it is replaceable, so that's... Um, that can be kind of remedied with an extra battery carrying around. I do like, however, the UI, even though it is a, a little bit uh, disjointed. I like uh, I like the touchscreen. I like capacitive. Uh, things flow. It's a very fast phone. Um, it's been rock solid, stable for a new OS. Synergy has been really nice. You know, in my contacts and calendar, being able to view other people's Google calendars um, and Facebook profiles. The way it brings in the Facebook profiles to the contacts is 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 awesome. The display, as you can see, is really fantastic. Um, it's small, but it's very high resolution. The fonts look great. Um, Palm's done a good job there. Including Sprint Navigation is a big selling point. That's $10 a month right there that's thrown into your data plan. So uh, to justify it, you can knock another $10 off, say, if you weren't going to buy it. Uh, I do like, even though the keyboard is kind of uh, limited to just text entry and speed dials, I actually like having a physical keyboard on there. And like I mentioned earlier, I love having an integrated mailbox option. Or if I go back, oops, if I go back, I can simply jump between the mailboxes or I can tap between all. I hate on the iPhone how you have to uh, go back so many different levels to jump to another email inbox. And as you can see right here, I have uh, just three set up and I even have more than that. So overall, I'm pretty happy with one week of this Sprint Palm Pre. I. Uh, I can't say for sure I'm going to keep it yet. Uh, I've got to do some more testing. I'm actually going to bounce back uh, on my iPhone, taking that with me too, to see if maybe I should uh, stick with my iPhone or iPhone 3GS or if the Palm Pre. You know, I, I've been a Palm fan since 1997. Uh, that's when I started using devices, and uh, I really want to see Palm do well um, with this device and succeed, but I also don't want to uh, jump into a, a device that... Uh, I'm not going to like. However, I, I really do like it, and I know that a lot is going to, uh, lots going to be added to it over time um, with applications coming out and things like that. And, and there's quite a bit of excitement around it. So we'll see what happens. So that's a quick look at the uh, Palm Pre after one week. Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphone.